take the peace and the joy and the righteousness. Amen. 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 All right, Galatians chapter 5. I've already been teasing the women this morning. Galatians chapter 5, I'm going to read quickly verses 16 through 25. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions and heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. How many of you have one of these at home? Amen. Oh, yeah. This is called a channel circle. Oh, yeah. Any man in here channel circle? <laughs> <laughs> Dennis is a channel circle. Yeah. Well, you know, I discovered something very early in my marriage. You know, when we first got married, we used to sit down and watch TV together. We don't do that for She's got hers and I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, you learn early in life when you're married that if you're a man, your channel surfer. If you want to get a woman over in the flesh, you just get the channel surfing when you're watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah. You see, the channel surfer, he knows exactly when that movie is going to come back on, but that woman, she's not quite sure. And so she gets irritated, you know, when you flip it back. I can watch three or four shows at the same time. They can only watch one at a time. And they get irritated if they think they're going to miss something. And so if you're channel surfing, and you'll, you'll learn that real, real quick in uh, marriage. And so last night I was channel surfing on my TV. <laughs> I channel surfing last night, and I happened to come across the boxing match as it was just getting started. Now, I'm not a big boxing fan, but it's just something about this caught my eye. And this fight was about to start. And both of the fighters, they were undefeated in the ring. I think one of them had a 12 and 0 record, and the other had 11 and 0 record. But one of the boxers, there was something very unique about him. This guy was 6 foot 7. 6 foot 7. And he weighed about 135 pounds. He was scared of the wasn't he? <laughs> String Bean. I nicknamed him String Bean. Anybody remember String Bean? No yeah, he TV. But his body, his body was about three times longer than his legs. And so I noticed this guy, he was six or seven. He he didn't have any muscle on him at all. He didn't look like he's skin and bone. And his opponent, however, man, he was muscular, you know. I mean, he was built. This guy, he was solid. He was only six foot one, but he looked rough. He looked tough, and he looked mean. And so I sat there a minute, and I sized him up real quick. Yeah. And I got to laugh. Got to laugh, and I said, I said, old string bean, he ain't going to last long to be a strong man. I said, I predict old strong man going to knock string bean out in the first round. Lo and behold, the first round goes by. String Bean landed 60 punches on this guy. Wow. Whoa. And then they went at it again at the second time. And I think it was the third round. String
brain bean got to working on strong man so bad that the referee had to step in between and separate him before old string man killed him. <laughs> You're a mean, skinny guy. Man, I judged that one wrong. You see, there wasn't anything in here that told me that on uh, February the 16th, 2019, that old string bean was going to work strong man over. That ain't in here. No. And so you know what I did? I judged by appearance. I judged by appearance. And I was totally and completely wrong. Now let me chase a rabbit here just for a second. You know I've got probably, I don't know, 250, 300 channels on my TV. And I don't watch them all. <laughs> I got this thing on my channel server that says favorites. And I got about 15 channels out of that 300 programmed into my favorites. And so when I channel surf, it's just the favorites. And I'm a news junkie. I like to know what's going on in the world. So I, I listen to a lot of these talk shows. I, I, I watch a lot of news programs. I'm going to go ahead and get I done got trouble already. But let me go ahead and get in a little more trouble here. Let me tell you something. If you're watching the news today, if you're watching ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, or MSNBC, the best thing you can do is cut it off. Because all you're getting is lies and deception. And you know, if you fill your mind with lies and deception, you're going to end up following after lies and deception. Just cut it off. Lies and deception. Fake news. And so what I want to talk about this morning is a fight, a battle that rages in every one of us. And any of us in here this morning that would deny this conflict or deny this battle that rages on the inside of us, we're simply self-deceived. We're not being honest with ourselves. Or either we need to be born again. Amen. It's something that all of us battle with every single day, and it's called the flesh. The flesh. We battle with the flesh. But those of us who have been born again, we have another power working within us defined as the Spirit of God. Amen. Now understand this. The flesh serves one thing. Self. The flesh is all about self. That's why we live in a world that can rightly be defined as a mess today because everybody's in it for themselves. That's not true. And that fight between the Spirit of God and the flesh rages within us constantly. But I want to say to you this morning, we need to accept the fact that by faith, eventually, the Spirit of God who lives within us is going to be victorious over the flesh. In the end, the flesh loses because the Spirit delivers the final knockout. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. The spirit and the flesh, they're constantly knocking heads with one another. We find ourselves in the middle of that conflict. You ever feel like you've got one power pulling you this way and another pulling you this way? Sure. Well, you know. Well, let me tell you, that's a good thing if you experience that. If you don't experience that, that's a bad thing because if you're not experiencing that, that means the devil's got you captive. He owns you. 
But if we've been born again, it is the Spirit of God who owns us. And so they're constantly at war with one another. We're in the middle of that conflict. Now the flesh, when we look at the flesh, it's kind of like looking at that strong man boxer I was looking at last night. He looked mean. He looked aggressive. He looked undefeatable. Funny I mean, Yeah. Have you ever thought? I mean, we. Yeah. Oh, they chose. You know, back in my gambling days, I'd have put a lot of money on strong man. I'd have lost. <laughs> lost it all. Huh? Yeah. So the flesh seemed like he's mean. Aggressive, undefeatable. But listen, the spirit is going to be the victor who lays out the last punt, brother. Yeah. Now, when we speak of the flesh, we're not talking about this organ that covers our bones, our skeletal structure. We're not talking about our literal flesh. We're not talking about our physical body. No, this physical body was created by God. And it is neutral. The physical body is neutral in this conflict. When the Spirit is in control, the Bible says we're walking in the Spirit. On the other hand, when the flesh is in control, we're walking in the flesh. Now, if you haven't discovered, the spirit and the flesh have two different appetites. So again, when we define the flesh, we're talking about that sin nature that every one of us came into this world with. That's what we define as the flesh. It's that old nature. That old nature that's like a pig. That old nature that's like a, a vulture. You know you see those vultures, they'll be flying up high or they'll be sitting on a pole. You know what they're looking for? They're looking for something nasty to eat. Right. They're looking to get that road killed before Dennis Hamilton gets to it. <laughs> something on 
on the inside of it, constantly fighting against it. Listen, when you try to do what's right, folks, you can expect to buy a battle. You can't do it yourself, no. can't win this battle in our own strength either. We can't win it with our own will. Oh, how many of you ever heard of the power of the will? Let me tell you something, folks. Willpower has nothing over the flesh. Strength being no work, willpower over every time. I want to say this to you this morning. God has given us all we need to win this raging fight within. Jesse, just think about it. God's given us everything we need. Amen. Amen. He's already given it to us. We just got to get take hold of it and believe it and work it. And the first thing we need to see is this. The Spirit has enabled us to overcome the flesh. Now I looked at old string being last night and I looked at strong man and I said, there ain't no way string being gonna do anything with strong man. But apparently, string being had what it took. Apparently, string bean had been well trained to go out there and take down strong man. The Spirit has enabled us to overcome the flesh. Amen. And so the solution to our problem, folks, is not willpower. I tried to quit drinking a thousand times. I tried to quit doing drugs a thousand times. I tried to quit smoking a thousand times. I tried to quit doing this and doing that a thousand times. And I failed over and over and over again. You know when I got the victory? When I looked up to God and I said, God, I can't do it. That's when God was able to move in, do it himself, and get the glory for it. I can't stand up here and boast about the fact that I did it this morning because I didn't. Amen. You let him do it, didn't you? <laughs> and so the solution is to surrender Amen. our lives to the Spirit of God, to Jesus Christ. Folks, you and I are in a battle that willpower cannot win. Amen. Yes. When we're led by the Spirit, Paul says we're no longer under the law. That's one fact we need to understand because if we don't understand that, the devil is going to be continually beating us over the head with condemnation. We're no longer under the law. The law can't touch us, folks. Flesh. Oh, I'm going to tell you, flesh puts a whooping on all of us sometimes. Yes, even the preacher. I didn't hear my mother-in-law and my wife say amen. So what's wrong? <laughs> Yeah, the flesh gets the best of us all sometimes. If we're whooping on us, the works of the flesh, guess what? The works of the flesh are never pretty. Ugly. Works of the flesh are ugly. And the flesh is what the world reveals to us every day, folks. Not only does the world reveal it to us, the world revels in it. The flesh is what's running the world today. The world is reveling it. We could say that the flesh is the manufacturer of sin. It's the manufacturer of sin. That's the flesh's specialty. Sin. The flesh. 
is absolutely incapable of producing any righteousness whatsoever. Flesh can't do it. And let me say to you this morning, that's what religion is all about, folks. Religion is just that. Religion is nothing more than a set of fleshly rules that try to produce righteousness that will fail every time. Religion is a work of the flesh that seeks to produce its own Prophet Isaiah said, that's the kind of righteousness that stinks in the nostrils of God. Paul gives a list of three different categories regarding the sins of the flesh. Sensual sins, superstitious sins, social sins. Okay? We're here to worship God. Amen. We're not here to worship self. We're not here to worship things. Paul said the old nature must be crucified. And the truth of that fact is this. In Christ, the moment that you and I came to Christ, the moment Christ came into our lives, we died with Him, we were buried with Him, and we arose with Him. Yeah. Understand that. Exactly. We are now alive in Him. So you say, preacher, how do we handle that old nature? God gives it to us. Well, let me say this. You can't handle it through the law. Why? The law can't change your nature. The law doesn't have the power to help you uh, to control that nature. No. Only through the crucified Christ and through the Spirit of God Amen. can we crucify the flesh. Understand that Christ died for you. And when He came into your life, you died with Him. The flesh died with Him on the cross. It's just hanging on right now. It doesn't want to give up. But it's got to go. Christ died to remove the penalty of my sin. I died with Christ in order to what? To break the power of sin. The power of sin no longer holds me captive. The flesh it's already been crucified. So what do we do? We must believe it and act on it by faith. There you go. The Spirit. You see, under the old covenant, the commands of God were written on stone tablets. But under the new covenant, we've been born again. The Bible says God has written His commandments on our heart. What does that mean? That means now we have a natural propensity <coughs> with the new nature to want to obey and live for God even when we come up short and we all come up short. It's the Spirit that enables us to overcome the flesh. God has given us all that we need to win this raging battle then. Secondly, I've got, got to hurry this morning. The Spirit enables us to fulfill the law of love and bear fruit. Machines. Anybody in here ever work with machines? That's just what they are. Machines. You often find machines in factories. And what do those machines do? They produce a product. Machines work to produce a product, but listen, 
Anybody ever seen a machine that could grow fruit? No. No. Machines can't grow fruit. Only trees, plants, can produce fruit. Fruit has to grow. And in the Christian life, the Bible says it is the Spirit who produces fruit in our lives. The flesh. What, what does the flesh produce? Dead works. That's what religion does, folks. Religion is nothing more than the flesh producing dead works, deceiving people into thinking that it is producing righteousness. <laughs> The flesh produces nothing but dead works. Only the Spirit can produce living fruit. And you and I live in a world that is filled with religiosity that is producing nothing but dead works which will be useless and worthless one day when they stand before God. Only the Spirit can produce that which is pleasing to God. God desires for His people that we have certain characteristics. And Paul defines those things here as the fruit of the Spirit. And he said that it all begins with love. You know, if you go back, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul said if you do this and you have this and you know all of this and you have all of this and you have not love, you have nothing. <coughs> all comes from love. And guess what? It's love that produces this holy optimism within us that compels us to move forward. I mean, folks, as Christians, you and I ought to be the world's greatest optimist. We don't have any business running around being pessimistic all the time. No! No! Like string bean, in the end we win. Amen. Regardless of how things look. Paul gives a running list here of those fruits of the Spirit that are produced by the Spirit. Now listen carefully. Satan is a master counterfeiter. He's a counterfeiter who loves to counterfeit the things of God. And that's exactly what we see in the religions of the world today, they are nothing but mere counterfeits of truth and love. There's a lot of counterfeit love in the world today. There's a lot of counterfeit truth in the church today. Maybe we'll preach on that next week. But the old nature has the capacity to counterfeit the fruit of the Spirit. But that's all it is, folks. Counterfeit fruit. That are nothing but, in reality, dead works. How do we allow the fruit to be produced and cultivated in our lives? By yielding to the Spirit and fully committing to Jesus Christ. Amen. Be filled with the Spirit, Paul said over to Ephesians. <laughs> Paul said, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Listen, the only way the Word of God is going to ever dwell in you richly is if you eat it and devour it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Eat it, devour it, wake up to it, go to bed with it, pray, worship, praise God, fellowship with God's people, yeah. stay busy weeding out the garden, folks. The fruit of the Spirit in our lives will serve 
as a witness to the world. Do you know that people are starving today for love, joy, and peace? Yeah. Yeah. The only way the world can get two hours of peace is get the happy hour when they get off work every day. They've got to have three or four drinks to get happy. And yet God has given you and I everything that we need to be happy. We're called to be examples. The flesh always brings praise to men. Did you get that? The flesh brings praise to men. The Spirit always brings praise to God. Freedom from sin and self come through the crucified Christ when we look to Him by faith. The Spirit of God is within those of us who've been born again he enables us to fulfill the law of love, to overcome the flesh, and to produce fruit that is pleasing to God. Give me three more minutes. The Spirit enables us to fulfill the law of love and bear fruit. God's given us all we need to win raging fight with the I conclude this morning, I go back to the fight between old string bean and strong man. Listen, you're going to discover that that flesh knows how to put up a real fight. Old strong man put up a fight. He got a couple licks in on old string bean. Flesh knows how to put up a fight. Listen, temptation in the day and age that you and I are living in, folks, can be serious. You know it can. And sometimes in the middle of this fight and in the middle of this battle, you're going to feel like you're in an unwinnable situation. Thirteen years ago, probably, uh, at least 10 years ago. Somebody in this church told me, said, Preacher, you in this church, you're fighting a losing battle. I'm still here. God, Amen. Amen. I'm Doors hadn't closed yet. Remember, you've got somebody in your corner. I like it. Brother Farr always says to me, don't worry, preacher, God's got you back. you got somebody in your corner, folks, that the world don't have. you got somebody in your corner that's going to see you through the fight no matter how bad it gets. Fight might go three rounds. I've been through a few fights and went 15 rounds. Down to the bell. Might go three rounds, it might go 15 rounds. You might even get knocked down several times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but the Bible said, though a righteous man falls seven times, guess what? He'll bounce back up. Even. Mm -hmm. You're going to come out victorious in the end. Why? Because victor's in your court. I hope you know who Victor is. Victor, the victorious one, is in your corner and you cannot lose. Not because of you. Not because of me and what I've done. No, it's because of him and what he done. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, old Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. You know what that means? That means 
see, Satan wanted to put a whooping on Peter. A bad one. Satan wanted to destroy Peter, but Jesus said to him, Don't worry, Peter. <clears throat> Why? I prayed that you fell not. Folks, we've got Christ seated at the right hand of the Father praying for us that we fell, we fell not. Listen, did you hear that? I said, He's sitting down. He ain't standing up looking over worried about whether you're going to win or lose this battle. He's already won the battle. Amen. That's why he's able to sit down. Amen. you got Christ in your corner. Understand, you cannot lose. Or you might come out of this thing with some black eyes. You might come out of it with a busted lip. You might come out of it with a couple of fractured ribs. But you're going to come out victorious. Amen. Amen. We can't lose when Christ and the Spirit of God is in our corner. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Is Jesus in your corner this morning? Amen. I certainly hope so. If not, if not, and you'd like to have Jesus on your team, in your corner, in your life, and you come this morning as we sing this closing hymn, let me pray with you and pray for you. You need prayer for whatever reason. Let me pray with you.